Even if you follow baseball, you've likely never heard of the Cienfuegos Elefantes, the Industriales Azuleones, or the Villa Clara Orangemen. Up until 2012, neither had I. That was when a good friend who had been trying to convince me to join him on a Cuba trip for years finally got me to go along. Since then, I've returned many times and I've been looking to fill in the blanks on Cuban baseball. My first Cuban voyage took me to a smaller city called Cienfuegos. The most convenient part being that the resorts were a short distance from the city proper. Not a given in most Cuban towns. If your vacation ambitions are of all-inclusive, lush pampering, decadent food, and vibrant nightlife, you may be disappointed in Cuba. But for me, three squares of edible ish fare, abundant cervezas and cohibas, lack of snow, and December baseball at an affordable price would have increased my rating right there. Getting to know the locals, being invited into their homes, gaining a greater understanding of their culture, and a shared love of hardball put it over the top for me. Oh, and the lobster. Cubans love to share their national game with tourists. They just don't make it that easy. The 16-team Cuban National Series has tweaked its format in the past few years and typically begins in September and runs until March. There are frequent breaks in the schedule for international tournaments such as the Caribbean Series. There is no league or team website. Luckily, www.baseballtocuba.com is your best resource for scheduling and news, but you will likely have to wait until game day to find out if it is an afternoon or evening start. The league has changed its format in the past few years. With 16 teams, only 8 make it to the second half of the season, the top 8 teams in the league. The other 8 teams cease operations for the year and a small pool of players are dispersed to the other teams in the league. This change means that a team, such as the Cienfuegos Elefantes, typically do not play in the second half of the season. They have been decimated by the departures of Yasiel Pui, Yoan Moncada and Jose Abreu and have struggled, losing more games than they win that unless I want to travel between September and December, I'm unable to see them. This has forced me to change my travel plans and has shifted my focus to Havana, home of the Industriales Azul Leones, the Yankees of Cuban baseball. The political climate in Cuba is changing, and many argue nothing, including baseball, will be left untouched. Ironically, a nation shaped by a revolution has not changed very drastically or quickly since. I hope to fill in the blanks in future trips and document what my eyes and cameras show me and what my Cuban brothers and sisters expose me to.